it's in the monitor room. Because of coarseness, if that makes sense. Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all stand. Everyone knows that we did CCYC on Thursday and Friday, and I don't. I think everybody that was there can say it was literally life changing. And one of the songs they sang on Friday night, it said, "No devil from hell can block what God has promised." And then the next line is, "I'm not finished yet." And with all the stuff that our church has gone through in the last month and a half, we had COVID hit. We had. I don't know how many deaths, but all these things. And I listened to that song, and the first thing that came to mind was our church. Because at that time, we were, I mean, we were in a powerful state. And we got to remember, he's not finished yet with us. Just because the devil thinks he can stop it, doesn't mean he can. So if we could just start this service off and remember, he's not finished yet. Because of who 
voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout with honor. Praise it for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight with honor. Praise it for the victory. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout with honor. Praise it for the victory. The weapons we use are not bombs and guns. Worship is the way that the battle is won. This is the way that we fight. We're gonna praise it for the victory. Praise it for the victory. This is the way that we fight.
sound of victory. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, go ahead. Let the devil know it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Oh, go ahead and let the devil know you still got the victory. You still got the victory. Go ahead and let him know it's not over. It's not over. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shut Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. If I needed a victory in my life right now, I'd be out in the aisle shouting. I'd be getting out in the aisle praising God. If I needed a healing, I'd get out in the aisle and start praising God for it. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Where's all of our youth congress people? Where's all of our youth congress people? I want you to get out here. Start praising the Lord. All of our youth congress people. They want to get up here. Start praising the Lord. Anybody else want to join us? Come on up here praising the Lord.
Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened just a few days ago. CCYC was going on in Charleston Friday, Friday, Thursday night. Thursday night, first meeting. And they were coming in for service. And Brother Greg Hurley, our district superintendent. Brother Rob Fazalore, our district secretary. Their wives were on their way to the meeting. Brother Hurley and Brother Fazalor were standing at the intersection. I think it's Washington Street. No, it's not Washington Street. Virginia, what is it? Virginia Street, I think. No. They were standing at the intersection. Getting ready to cross, straight across the street was the Civic Center. They were standing there waiting for traffic to pass. Courier Street was Courier Street. They were on. They were uh, waiting for traffic to pass so they could cross. We've done it. I don't know how many times when we have district board meetings. Most all the time, the district board is all together and we're walking at the same time on our way toward the meeting. And brother, but it, we didn't have board meetings this time. My wife and I were at. Uh, Pinsboro at Randy's mother's visitation and other board members were elsewhere and Brother Hurley and Brother Fazzle were standing there alone just talking and as they were standing there and the cars were coming they looked and they thought we're going to witness an accident there was a car that was in a lane another car that was in a lane it was a Tesla the Tesla turned in front of the other car and the other car swerved so the Tesla wouldn't hit him. And when that car swerved, it went up on the sidewalk where Brother Fazalor and where Brother Hurley were standing. The, Brother Hurley was the first one that the car hit, and the car was try, trying to pull him underneath the car. Brother Fazalor was the second one that the car hit. Brother Fazalor was thrown 30 feet. He was thrown 30 feet from where the car hit him that was calculated by the police and fortunately one of the police that showed up was Joe Means which we've known Joe since he was a little boy but Joe is a member of first of North Charleston Apostolic he knew brother Hurley he knew brother Fazlor very well and he was there at the scene and they were treating them brother Hurley I guess just running off of adrenaline, heard Brother Fazlor. And Brother Fazlor was crying out, help me, help me, help me. Brother Hurley jumped up and not even feeling the pain that he was in, Brother Hurley ran to Brother Fazlor, picked up his head. Brother Fazlor was going into shock. His eyes were rolling back in his head. And... Brother Hurley was praying for Brother Fazlor and holding his head up and kept telling him, Brother Fazlor, stay with me. Stay with me. Pete, Nick witnessed the accident. Nick came running. He was up on the bridge. He came running down as fast as he could to get down there. He saw them, he saw them get hit. And J Sister Janie was there. Remember, all, all of the kids were there. They all witnessed the accident. And they called ambulances as quick as they could. I think, I think Brother Fazler's wife is the one that called 911 first and to get the police there. The man driving the car jumped out of the car. He was crying and uh, saying, it's my fault, it's my fault. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They they got there. The EMTs finally arrived fairly quickly, and they started examining Brother Hurley and Brother Fazlor. They, on the way to the hospital with Brother Hurley in the ambulance, they said that Brother Hurley had a broken shoulder, a broken elbow, and a broken leg from the accident. 
and they had called ahead and told them you need a full trauma team, including neurosurgery, on uh, present when we get there. Brother Fazlor, I don't know as many details of Brother Fazlor's transport, but he was transported to uh, CAMC General, <coughs> and they took them in and began to, they put splints on them immediately. Or on, I think Brother Hurley already had a leg splint on, but they put a splint on his shoulder and his elbow and on his leg, made sure, cut off all of his clothes, cut off Brother Fazlor's suit, and began examining them. Uh, Brother Fazlor had gashes along his head and blood on him. Brother Hurley along his leg, uh, cuts and scrapes. And, and so forth, and uh, they began to do MRIs. They, they put them in the CT scan and what? And x-rays, examining them. We got the text. We were in Pennsburg. We got a text from Nick, uh, as probably close to right when it happened, and we, went, we were standing there, my wife, Brother Harbarger, Brother Simons, and Brother Adams, we're standing there, and we went to prayer right there in the funeral home and began to pray for them, asking God to touch them. The Youth Congress was totally unaware of anything going on. They did not want anything to hinder uh, the services, so they did not tell the Youth Congress uh, what was happening at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> when they examined Brother, uh, Brother Joe Means, the police officer that was there he said we've been here before we've seen accidents just like this this is not good this is not good there's going to be head trauma uh, there's going to be broken bones we've seen people and the car was going about 35 to 40 when it hit them it's going 35 to 40 miles an hour at impact and he said, he said, most cases like this, uh, people are either paralyzed or don't survive these accidents. When they examined Brother Hurley, Brother Hurley did not have one broken bone. Not one. <laughs> Janie, Jane, Sister Janie looked at his leg and she said, that's not the way a leg's supposed to look. And whether, whether the bones were never broken or whether God touched them on the way to the hospital, I don't know. I don't know. But what should have happened should have been a bunch of broken bones and some head trauma. Uh, he was, they treated him at the hospital and released him that night. Brother Fazalor, they examined him. Uh, due to the shock that he had went into and uh, thought, thinking that he probably had a concussion and other things, they kept him overnight for observation. Brother Fazlor, after being thrown 30 feet, did not have one broken bone, not one. He was, he was for a while, he was... Uh, hallucinating and saying things that made no sense but through a process of time all of that went away and they released him Saturday afternoon from the hospital uh, saying that he was fine that uh, there were no major injuries just the scrapes scratches and uh, am I right am I saying everything right just the scrapes and the scratches uh, and so forth that he had uh, picked up from being thrown on the concrete. Where they were hit at, there was concrete blocks that came up out of the ground that were holding uh, flagpoles and light poles. There were metal light poles there. They could have very easily been thrown into those poles. They went between those poles and were thrown between them. Folks, God is in control. God is absolutely in control. Could you, have could you imagine the impact on the West Virginia, Western Maryland district if the head, the leadership, the secretary, and the uh, superintendent of our district 
were killed in a car accident in one day and that would put our, our district into, uh, I don't want to say turmoil, but it would surely shake things up a bit. And could you imagine the churches, two churches, two pastors, uh, Solid Rock and Kaiser both losing their pastors in one day. And of course, our, both of them are dear friends of ours and then their families uh, losing that in one day, the impact. But God who is merciful and God who has angels encamped around his children watched over them Thursday night and what could have been a tragedy has become a testimony to the power of God, to the mercy of God, to God keeping us and God watching over us. When you don't realize it, God is keeping you safe. When you don't, you better be living for God and living close to the cross because the devil may want to take you out. And if he does, he's going to try everything he can. These two men both live close to the cross. These two men are godly, anointed men of God. And then maybe another time I will share with you a, a missionary called Brother Hurley last night. As a matter of fact, called Brother Hurley and Brother Fazlor and had a word from the Lord from them in regard to this accident. And maybe I'll share that with you sometime. He shared it with us through the night. And maybe I'll share it with you sometime. But God is in control, my friend. God is in control. And God is going to take care of his own. God is going to take care of his own. What a great presence of the Holy Ghost is in this place. What a great anointing of God I feel in this house right now. I feel such a powerful presence of Almighty God among us today. And what we have been through over the past, over the past weeks, our church has went through a great time of, 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 of loss and, and some loss. I, I know God always sends uh, God always replaces it. And when, and when some you lose one, God sends another to, to fill the gap. But yet these, uh, the passing of Brother Chris and Sister Sauters has left a great big hole in our church. It's left a great big hole in our congregation. And, and, but God is gonna, God's going to fill that. God's going to fill that. But today God has come down in this house. And God is reminding us he hasn't left us. God's reminding us he hasn't forsaken us. God's reminding us in our trouble and all that we've been going through. God has been with us every single step of the way. God is with us. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel such a spirit of victory in this house. I know some of you have been struggling. Some of you in here have had COVID, and it's good to see you back. Uh, glad that you're better. Well, thank God for that. And we've got folks, Sister Robin, who is uh, positive for COVID right now. Brother Kevin, who is also uh, positive for COVID. And uh, both these people are doing okay. Uh, but they're both still pretty sick, and we want to pray that God would touch them today and minister to them. We've got other folks still kind of uh, skittish about coming to church, so forth, so on. Uh, and I understand, totally understand, totally understand, uh, especially our seniors and our elderly, especially that I understand their, their apprehension of coming. And we want to pray for all of these folks. Would you stand with me? As we go to prayer right now for those that are sick and lift them up in prayer and ask God to touch those. Sister Deb Jeffers, we want to pray for her. Sister Freeman is home. Sister Charlotte Freeman is home. But we want to lift her up in prayer and ask God to be with her, her hand to touch and minister to her today. And there's many others on the prayer list today. Brother Senate, Brother Bill, uh, Sister Janie's dad is in the hospital still. And uh, so let's lift him up in prayer and ask God to touch him. He's got a, he's got a road of, long road of recovery, but I believe God's going to get him through that. In Jesus' name, let's pray for them today. And uh, also let's pray for uh, 
brother and sister Joseph, who have been friends of ours for many, many years, uh, their daughter, uh, Adina, and her husband, Jared, are going through a difficult time right now. And let's pray that God would touch them. Uh, they are they're precious people that love God. And so let's pray that God would touch them today and pray that God continue to order this service. God, in your precious name, I pray today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, in your precious name today, God, that you would move by your power today. God, we come before you, Lord, with great faith in this atmosphere of the Holy Ghost. And God, we believe you today and we take authority over all manner of sickness and disease and ask you, God, to touch and to minister. Pray you touch Jonathan and minister to him today. I pray your healing power, God, for him and Brother Kevin and Sister Freeman, God, and Deb, that you would touch them, Sister Duncan and Chris, leak us, God, that you administer to them today and ask you, God, by your power, there's not a sickness you can't heal. So, Lord, we speak the word of faith and ask you, Lord, to minister today by your great power that you would touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray today, God, that you would touch and minister to every need in this congregation. You're able, Lord God, to minister today. Oh, God, whatever needs we have brought into this house, whatever burdens we have carried among us today, Lord, we give it all to you, and we pray today by your power, God, that you touch, touch Bill in the hospital and continue your healing. And we pray for Adina and Jared, and we ask you, God, to give them comfort touch them right now God and minister to them let your hand be upon them Lord we pray and God you wrap yourself around them let your love just flow over them God and feel your grace at this moment I pray Lord you continue to bless our time together today bless our service order it in the Holy Ghost God we pray touch all of those Lord that are at home today unable to be here we pray god let the same holy ghost we feel here be the same holy ghost they feel there and god you saturate them let faith rise in their hearts god to reach out to you today for their needs we pray and we ask it all in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ in jesus name we pray in jesus name thank you jesus thank you jesus Charlie, I think, for the weather, I think you had your hand up. Did you, was there a request? No. Okay. Amen. If you need to be anointed and prayed for, would you come this morning? We want to anoint you. It's a great atmosphere. The touch of God here today. If you need to be anointed and prayed for, would you come? Join these that are coming, and let's ask God to minister to them. Brother Smith, would you join me up here? We could pray for these. It's God to minister to them today.
prayer. Let's thank him for answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister D, would you take these prayer requests? Pray over them. One of the ushers will bring it back to you. Also, we have a letter from brother and sister Michael Long, missionaries to Zimbabwe and Botswana. And they've got great reports here. 15 receiving the Holy Ghost, 25 baptized, five churches uh, that are uh, giving of their offerings, able to give of their offerings, and so forth, so on. Great reports. Another place, seven filled with the Holy Ghost, three baptized. Eight more filled with the Holy Ghost, three more baptized. What a great report from Botswana and Zimbabwe. Who will take this missionary letter and pray over these nations and pray for brother and sister Long? Kenzie, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Amen. As the ushers come, you may be seated. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, today for what we have felt in this house. What a great blessing, God, you have been to us today to be in your sanctuary. I pray, God, as we come to this part of the service, we do this in our worship. This is just as much a part of our worship, God, as anything else we do. So I pray your blessing upon it. Multiply it, God. And Lord, I pray you add souls to the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. How great, how great is our God.
be praised. Great and greatly to be praised, oh God. We worship you. We exalt you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated for a moment. So good to have a home with us, Brother Steve Smith. Uh, Sister Sherry is over with her dad. And we're thrilled to have Brother Smith. Brother Smith, Smith is missionary to uh, the nation of Guyana and Suriname. I knew it started with an S, I won, but I'm sure it wasn't Seattle. But uh, Brother Smith, would you like to stand and, and leave a word of testimony for a moment or come up here? You're welcome to come up here. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> Brother Smith will be preaching next Sunday. Sister Crystal and I will be out of town, but uh, he will be preaching and ministering here next Sunday. He will bless you, uh, so be sure. Amen. <laughs> Always a blessing when they come and preach for us. I'm thrilled to have them home. I was going to introduce you to the young man standing up here that some of you probably didn't recognize, uh, but that is Brother Caleb McDaniel, who is married to Sister Lexi McDaniel, who is the daughter of Brother Steve Smith, and uh, we're thrilled that they're here with us today, and uh, they've come in for uh, her cousin's wedding, and uh, but they were able to be in church with us today, and we thank God for that, and good to have them here worshiping with us. We love this young couple. And I believe God's got tremendous things ahead uh, for them. And God's hand's going to be upon them. <laughs> now, I want you to look at something before I get into the scripture. And I don't know exactly how this is going to, what I'll do today. I may just talk to you for a little bit or who knows how it will end up. But I want you to look at something. I want the two young men in the stand booth to, or sound booth to stand. I want you to look at how handsome these guys are. And uh, how, how dressed up they are. One is modest, one is not. And <laughs> uh, what's that? <laughs> oh, they look awful good today. Brother Brent, stand up. Look at this guy. Look at him. I tell you, he has done something that I sure have not been able to do, and uh, he looks so good and all dressed up today. I feel like we should have the Easter parade coming down. The, remember when churches used to do the Easter parade, and all everybody all dressed up would come down the aisle and, and, and uh, show off their, their Easter best, and, uh, but these, these, these young men look awful good back there, and Brother Brent looks awfully good as well. Man, I'm glad to be in church. Oh, I'm glad to be in church. Yeah. You, you don't know how much you miss it till it's gone. So it's not there. Till we're not, it's not gone, but, but till uh, we're not having it. And, and last few weeks has been, uh, I just hate it when we do that, have to do that. But God's been awful, awful good to us, and God has kept us through so much. Amen. Amen. All right, stand with me. I want to read a couple scriptures. And uh, first scripture from 1 Timothy, chapter 15. Chapter, <laughs> well, that's a long t book of Timothy, isn't it? 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 15. I got to be careful because if you add to the scriptures, bad things happen. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, and verse 15. Bible says this, 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That just says it right there. That wraps it up right there. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom Paul said, I am chief. I think I would argue with him about that. I think I could take his place. But the fact is, Jesus came to save sinners. Ezekiel chapter 34 Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, and verse 16. This is a scripture I marked a long, long time ago. And every Bible I've ever had, this scripture is marked. And I've had several. Ezekiel 34, verse 16, the Bible says, I will seek that which was lost. And bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. I want to speak to you for the next few minutes. His purpose is our mission. His purpose is our mission. Would you pray with me? Lord, I ask you today, God, to anoint my mind. Help me, God, today to minister to your word. Let my mind be alert to the Holy Ghost and loose my tongue that I may preach under this, under this precious congregation. I pray your hand upon me, God, that my words may be your words. But, God, most of all, let our hearts be ready to receive the word of God today. Let our hearts be tender to your presence, but let the seed of your word, God, let it fall upon good ground in, the, in our hearts, O oh God, that your word may spring forth and bear fruit in our lives, we pray. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Next week, next Saturday, is my spiritual birthday. February 5th, 1989. I was born again. God filled me with the Holy Ghost, and I spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. So I've been in church some, what is it, 89, 99, 2009, 2019, 33 years is that right? Did I calculate that right, some of you science majors? <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> that was very kind of you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my, I appreciate you. <laughs> 33 years. I've been in church 33 years, had the Holy Ghost. There's been some mountains to climb. There's been some valleys I've walked through. There's been some moments that were re of great rejoicing and victory, and there have been some moments of sorrow and pain. But in it all, God has always been faithful. God always has been the same in every time, every situation I've been in. I've witnessed some changes in the church in those years as we have as I have grown and walked with God, I've noticed new songs come and go. We've got new instruments. We put, we've got lights that are different colors. Isn't that wonderful? On the platform. When, and that's okay. I'm not, that's all great. And, and I've, I've witnessed some changes along the way. We've redecorated. We've dressed up a little better and done some things to make the church look better and so forth and so on. I've watched as our organization has, has changed and there's been elections and men have come and men have gone. 
and uh, they they hold different offices or pastor different places or whatever now. And I've witnessed a lot of stuff that's happened over the past 33 years in the church and through the church. But the one thing that is constant is that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost. The one thing that has not changed, it doesn't matter if you like the old songs or you like the new songs or you just kind of like something in between. It doesn't matter if you like all the extra instruments or you just want a keyboard or a piano. It doesn't matter. The purpose is the same. It doesn't matter who sits as the superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church International or of the district of the West Virginia, Western Maryland district or even who stands in this church, in this place right now and you call them pastor. The purpose is still the same. Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save that which was lost. There are a lot of constants in our world. The sun comes up every morning. Thank God. The, we, we go through our four seasons, and, and whether you like the season we're in right now or, or not, it's here, but it'll be gone in about what, 10 weeks or so, something like that, or maybe a little longer, it, it'll go and spring will be here. And that is a constant. God set those things in a motion. He, he placed everything in its place. Every star has its place. Every moon, every sun has its place. The air and all of nature operates as God has ordained it to be. And the purpose of the church is still the same. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was born in a, in a manger in Bethlehem. And when the angel of the Lord appeared unto, unto Joseph, he said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Every time his name was spoken, it was a reminder of his purpose. Every time his name was said, it was a reminder of of his purpose. Jehovah has become our salvation. Jesus. It's what he came to do. It was his purpose before the world was formed. It was ordained that Jesus would come to seek and to save the lost. We must never forget the purpose of Jesus and the cross. John said it when he looked at him. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You could see it in his lifestyle as he ministered to the lost, the multitudes. He was drawn to them, the lepers. He did not walk away from them. He would make a way to minister. He would go to the homes of taxpayers and tax collectors, and he would preach the gospel. He would sit in the midst of a crowd in a house when nobody else could get into just to minister the gospel. It was his lifestyle. It was how he lived. He sat in the home of Zacchaeus and he looked at Zacchaeus and told him today salvation has come to your house. The minute he walked in, salvation had come. People would stand and murmur about him fellowshipping with sinners. They would talk about the woman that would wash his feet with their hair. Yet Jesus would tell the parable of the man of, of the one who had the lost sheep. He would tell the parable of the one that had had, had ninety nine in the fold, but would leave the ninety and nine to go and seek one. He said, "That's the value of the one I came. If there was just one, I would come because I've come to seek and to save that which was lost." We all dream of things. We all desire things. We all want things, and, and we, we, we pursue those things. There are people who go to college to be a lawyer, and they become a lawyer. They dream of it that day that they receive that diploma. The architect dreams of the day that his home, whether the drawing on that paper will someday become a reality. Mothers dream of their children being successful and happy, and, and they dream of these things, and but the desire 
of Almighty God is still the same. I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. Whether people seek fame or they seek wealth or they seek promotion or notoriety or companionship, his desire will not change. He says, I've come to seek and to save the lost. And in 2022, it is the same. He said in Ezekiel, I'll seek that which was lost, and I'll bring again that which was driven away, and I will bind up that which was broken, and I will strengthen that which was sick. Let you remind you today, let this message, this word from this pulpit remind you that he has a purpose, but we have a mission, and his purpose is our mission. It hasn't changed. From the day the church began, we have a mission to go into the world to seek and to save the lost. We have a mission. The scribes and the Pharisees would stand far off and they would watch Jesus. They would watch because they wanted to criticize him. They wanted to try to murmur against him and whatever he would do. And, and his mingling with sinners was, gave them great opportunity because they did not want to rub shoulders with the sinners. They did not want to get caught speaking to the sinners. Anything they could do to avoid the sinners, they became the holier than thou. They became the ones who were too good to reach out to the sinners. But God said, I don't care how broken it is. I don't care how sick it is. I don't care how lame it is. I don't care how far it is. I've come to seek and to save the lost. If a man have a hundred sheep and lose one, and lose one, oh, I wish you could understand the heart of a pastor when he loses one. I wish you could understand the heart and the heart of a man of God that God has placed as a shepherd over a flock when he loses one. Uh, his, his heart breaks. His heart breaks, but it's not just his heart that breaks. It's the heart of God that one has left the fold, that one has walked away, that one has allowed the world to pull and to tug, that one has got so discouraged that he can't go on, that one does not have uh, the, the prayer life to maintain a walk with God, that one has allowed sin to enter their heart, and it has broken them, and they have strayed from the security the fold and they've left the covering of the church to walk out into the world. Let me tell you something. The minute you leave the church, you open yourself up to anything that the enemy has to give you. The enemy is here to seek and to destroy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And when you leave the security and the covering of a church, when you walk away from the covering of a pastor, you don't realize that you you're opening yourself up for pain and anguish down the road. There's going to be something in your future that will break you. There will be something in your future that will get a hold of you and you will want back. There'll you, you'll be looking. Is the shepherd somewhere close? But he says, for the one, I'll leave the 90 and 9 and I'll go into the wilderness I'll, not, I'll go into the wilderness if that's what it takes to try to find that one. I'll go after that which is lost. I'll lay it on my shoulders and I'll come back rejoicing. I'll find it and I'll pick it up and I'll lay it on my shoulders. And what about the woman having ten pieces of silver who loses one and doth light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently, the Bible says, doing everything she can to find it. Jesus spent three, three parables in Luke chapter 15. He goes on to talk about the prodigal son that wanders off, that tries, that thinks it's better down the road, that looks down the road with that wandering eye thinking oh it must be better somewhere else than it is in the father's house there must be more happiness somewhere else than in the father's house and he goes and for a while he enjoys it for a while he gives him what he wants but he 
he comes to the point that he finds himself in the in the pigsty and he finds himself slopping the hog and he finds himself covered with the mud and he finally, the Bible says, he finally comes to himself and he realizes even the servants in my father's house have got it better than I. Every one of those parables speaks of the love of a father. Every one of those parables speaks to the love of a God who came and to seek and save that which was lost. You take one single soul Take one single soul and you put that soul on the scale of life. And you take all the riches of the world and you take every bit of wealth that Donald Trump and, and, and anybody else that's rich and put it on the other side of that scale. And every single time that soul will outweigh the weight of the wealth of this world. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? What does it profit a man if he gain everything else but lose his own soul? There is not one single soul that, that wealth will outweigh in this world because he came to seek and to save that which was lost. My wife and I have in our home a bedroom suit. It's not very pretty. Matter of fact, it doesn't look very good at all. When you sit on the bedroom on the bed, literally it sounds like it's ready to fall. It doesn't look good. You pull the chest of drawers out, Brother Smith, and they won't go back in. Maybe you've got the same bedroom suit I've got. But I guarantee you. Whatever someone would come and offer me for that bedroom suit would not be enough because I would turn that offer down. Why? Because they don't see the value in that bedroom suit that I see. They don't see the value that I see. My mom and dad set up housekeeping with that bedroom suit. It was in the first house they ever lived in, Elder Pettit. They've never, every house my mom and dad ever lived in, that bedroom suit was in. Every house I've ever lived in, that bedroom suit was in. My mom and dad gave me that bedroom suit when I lived in Charleston, moved in my house in Charleston. I had that bedroom suit. We packed up that bedroom suit, and we brought it to Ravenswood and put it in that ugly yellow house up on the hill. And we had that bedroom suit. We packed up that bedroom suit and we put it in our bedroom here at the house we live in now. I've never, never lived in a house without that bedroom suit. That bedroom suit means more to me than you can offer me. My mom and dad had always had that bedroom suit. And it may be broken. And that bedroom suit is scratched up and probably need to get some old English and and take a couple days and maybe maybe it'd make it look a little better. I don't know whether it would or it wouldn't. It's got the big four posters on it, four poster bed. You know what I'm talking about. And it's just a full size bed. It really, really isn't. Probably if I sold it, I don't know that I could. I don't know that anybody would be be interested in it. It doesn't shine like a new one does. But God said, God didn't say I'm coming looking for the healthy. I, and I'm coming looking for the, for the wealthy. And I'm coming looking for, for those who've got their life all together. And I'm coming looking for people who, who, who are, are, are just all good and no bad. And he, he didn't say that. He, he, said, he said in Ezekiel, he said, I'm, I'm coming looking for the lost. I, I, I'm, I'm coming looking for, for those that's been driven away. I, I, I'm looking for the broken, and, and, and I'm, I'm looking for the sick. It may not, they may not look good, but I've come to seek and save the lost. They, they may not even be pretty, but I've come and seek to save the lost. And their life may be broken and, and a mess, but I've, I've come to seek and save the lost. And, and they may be falling apart on every side, but I've come to seek and to save the lost. They 
they may come with a whole lot of baggage on their shoulders, but I've come to seek and I've come to save the lost. Brother Carl, we weren't pretty when we came to God. We didn't have anything to offer when we came to God. But God met us at an altar. God filled you with the Holy Ghost right back there. His purpose is our mission. He came to seek and to save the lost. It doesn't matter. We're talking about, and I know we're talking about your children. Because we got some families with some lost kids in here. And I, I, I know we're talking, we're talking about maybe some spouses and maybe some parents, and we're talking about, about some friends, and we're talking about neighbors, and we're talking about family, and, and, and we all we all can think about people that can talk about being that need to be saved, whose life is a mess and, and the, it's all it's all not good and we try to we try to meet their needs. We we've had our clothing give away and we try to give people clothes so that they have coats in the winter time and clothes for their kids to wear to school. We do the clothing giveaway and, and, and we've done various things during COVID. We we took dinners to the nursing homes and, and, and to the, the places up here in town. We fed them dinners so that so they knew that people appreciated them and we thank God for them and, and for everything they did and, and, and so forth. We, we, we try to meet those needs and we do the best we can and trying to minister to our community. And I know my wife mentioned to me today, I, I thought it was a great idea. A, a church had come up, uh, come up with an idea and I, I, if, I don't know if I'll get this right. You can tell me if I don't, but it's, it's something about hugs for our community or something like that. And, and, and so they're, they're, they're trying to do things to show their community that they love them and, and that they care. And so we, we try to do those things, but it comes down to this. A coat is not going to save them, and, and, a, and a dinner is not going to save them, and, and a, a candy bar is not going to save them. And, and, and those things, we're, we're trying to build bridges because our purpose is to reach the lost and our, our mission is to reach the lost. We have no other mission as a church than to reach the lost. I love what we've done in our sanctuary. Just the other night, a visiting pastor just went on and on about how beautiful our church was and how beautiful our sanctuary was. And, and I told him, I said, well, I did the best with all my decorating ability I could. You laughed because you knew that I'd, I had nothing to do with it. And I, I love having a beautiful sanctuary. I love, I love our church is beautiful, Brother Luke. I, I, I love that. I, I love that, that, that people come in here and, and, and they, they find it aesthetically pleasing. I, I, I love that. And I'm proud, I'm proud to be called the pastor of the church and, and, and things. And, and I was I, on my way to church today. I was making a list in my mind. We need, to, we need to paint the gutters and we need to do this this summer and all kinds of stuff that we, that we need to do this summer. And we'll, we'll jump on that when the weather breaks and so forth to keep our church looking good. Good and make sure the flower beds look real good and stuff like that and, and we'll do that but we're not called just to build a beautiful building and we're not called to make sure the carpet looks nice and we're not called to make sure we've got good flower beds and we're not called for that that's all that's all part of what we do but that's that's not our mission because our mission is to go into the highways and, and the byways and compel them to come in our, our mission is to reach out to the broken and the sick and, and the lost and the driven away and to compel them to come in. Our mission isn't just to give coats away. Our mission isn't just to feed people. And our mission isn't just to show up on Sunday. Thank God you're faithful to church. Thank God you're faithful to church. Appreciate it. Thank God for being in the house of God and being worshipers and responding to the move of the Holy Ghost today. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, and I'm proud of you. 
I'm proud of every member of this church. I, I'm proud of who you are and what God has done in your life. And I thank God for you. I love you and I'd do anything for you. But let's not forget the mission. Let's not forget the mission. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Don't forget the mission. Don't forget that, that God came for a cross and the purpose of that cross was to save us. Don't forget the mission. Don't forget the mission. It's not just about the shouting and the dancing and I'll shout with the best of you and I'll run with the best of you and I'll dance with the best of you. It's about reaching out to people that are lost. It's about teaching Bible studies. It's about praying with people in the streets. It's about reaching the lost. We are not, we're not a, a, a rest home. We're a hospital for the broken, and we're a hospital. There's people sitting in this pews today that came broken. There's people sitting on pews today in this sanctuary that were abused when you were young. There's people in this sanctuary today who fell into a, li a destructive lifestyle and, and, and ended up in, in drugs and addiction. There's members of this church that, that have been in prison. There's, there's people in this church who've ended up all kinds of ways in life, and, but yet you, you found a place and a safe haven, and you found a place uh, where, where God could reach you, and you, you found a place uh, where you could be saved, and you found a place uh, that would tell you the truth, uh, and you found a place uh, that would love you and care for you, and you found a place. <laughs> Jesus said to me, Matthew, he said, for I was hungered, and you gave me, and you gave me meat, and I was thirsty, and you gave me drink, and I was a stranger, and you took me in, and I was naked, and you clothed me, and I was sick, and you visited me, and I was in prison, and you came to me. Jesus said, inasmuch as you did it under the, one of the least of these, you did it unto me. Every time you reach for a lost soul, you did it. You're doing it unto him. Every time, every time you show kindness and mercy to somebody, you did it unto him. Every time you do it, you did it unto him. I'm talking about remember the mission. He had a purpose. We all celebrate that. We'll recognize that at Easter here in a few weeks, the purpose for which Jesus came. And we'll, we'll rejoice over the cross and, and all that, and, and, and we'll, we'll recognize that. But let's not forget uh, that on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, from Sunday to Saturday, we have a mission. Every single day, uh, there, there are impotent folk, and there are blind and they're a halt and they're a withered that are waiting for the moving of the water and they're waiting for a church that'll say I've got a mission and you're it I've got a mission and you're it Folks, there doesn't have to be another cross, and there doesn't have to be another Calvary, and there doesn't have to be another another Pentecost. It's all been done. Calvary was enough. The blood was enough to save anybody. There's not a sinner I know that can't be saved. There's not a sinner I know whose life cannot be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. There's not a person I know in this world I've never met a sinners so bad and I was chief of the sinners I, I, I've never met a sinner so bad that God couldn't reach down and pick them up from where they were and change their life oh I'm talking about the halt and the impotent and the lame and the withered that are waiting for the moving of the water say not ye there are yet four months and then cometh harvest but I say to you Lift up your eyes right now. Lift up your eyes right now. And look on the fields. Lift up your eyes right now. We'll leave here today and we'll go to the restaurants or we'll go home and we'll stop at, stop at the quick stop and we'll maybe get some gas and we'll walk in to the store and you'll walk past impotent folk 
waiting for the moving of the water. You'll, you'll, find, you'll, you'll, you'll find people in the restaurant waiting for the moving of the water. It's not, you don't have to wait for the harvest. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. The harvest is waiting on the laborers. The harvest is waiting on the laborers. It's waiting on somebody that said, Lord, I'll seek the lost. I'll go after the lost. I'll bring again that which is driven away. Patrick, go into my office, get my globe, and bring it in here real quick. Make sure you get the, the loose stand on the bottom of it or it'll, or it'll fall over when you set it up. Brother Smith, I'm glad you're here today. I thank God for you. I thank God for your burden. There's not a moment you've talked, not one time you've ever talked about your burden that there ha it hasn't overwhelmed you and it hasn't come upon you. I thank God for your burden. I thank God for your willingness to go to Guyana. I thank God that, that uh, Caleb and Lexi, and forgive me if I don't call you brother and sister McDaniel, but I'm just Caleb and Lexi, if that's all right today. They, they feel a burden to go, and I think, I think they're going to go to Suriname, and, and they're going to be aimers. So I'm bring it on up here. Bring it up here. Did you get the other leg? Good. It's terrible to have a globe without a leg. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had a really big globe. This will do. Because there's not one nation that's represented on this globe that Jesus didn't come to save. There's not one kindred or tribe or tongue that the blood of Jesus wasn't shed for. Fix my leg there, somebody. <laughs> Going to ruin my sermon. God, God, I pray for China. I pray for Russia. God, I pray for Greenland. And I pray for Norway and Switzerland. And I pray, God, for Vietnam. I pray for Cambodia. I pray for Canada. God, I pray. I pray for Florida. I pray for Oregon. And I pray for Ohio and West Virginia and Indiana. And I pray for New York because you came to seek and save the lost. You came to seek and save the lost. You came, God, for the white and the black. You came, God, for those, God, that have never heard your name. You came for those in Iran and Iraq. God, I pray. I pray, God. For those that are lost. Because God, we have a mission. That's why we give to missions. That's why you fill out that envelope and you put money in it and you market missions. Because somebody in France needs to hear the gospel. Somebody in Japan is waiting, is waiting for a missionary. Waiting for somebody. Somebody in Texas is waiting for a church to open in their community that will preach the truth. Afghanistan. God, we have a mission. We have a mission. Next Sunday we'll take up an offering. It's our Christmas for Christ offering. It goes to home missions. We have we, we take it up every year this time. and That offering will be sent. Not a dime of it stays here. Every bit of it goes to home missions and to start churches in other cities. I heard a preacher the other night preach. He's from South Dakota. Do you know how many churches, apostolic churches, are in South Dakota? Seven. 
in the whole state. Seven apostolic churches. We're blessed to have 63 in the state of West Virginia. But there's still cities that don't have churches. Per capita, we're, West Virginia is more church than Ohio or Virginia. Per capita. So there's churches that need to be started in Ohio and Virginia. Because he said, I'll lay down on a cross for the lost. While they're sick, while they're maimed, while they're halt, I'll die for them. But I'll pour my spirit out on a church to reach the lost. His purpose, our mission. Hasn't changed. In a few years, we'll probably get new carpet again, but the mission will be the same. I got to reach the lost. I got to teach somebody a Bible study. I got to pray for revival in Spain and in Italy. I got to pray for revival in Egypt and in Sudan. I gotta pray for revival in Guyana and Suriname. Because I've, he came to seek and to save the lost. His purpose, our mission. Tell you what, musicians, let's just let's just not do any music for a little bit. We're just gonna go to prayer. Is that all right? We're just going to pray because there's a world that needs reached. And there's people on Flynn Street and Race Street and Sand Street in Ravenswood. And there's people on Church Street in Ripley. There's people in Racine. It's right here. That are lost. That are lost. There's people in Rutland that are lost. Pomeroy that are lost. And I've got to be, I've got to reach him for the pettit. i got to reach him. you got to reach him. For the car, you got to reach him. Brother Eber, we got to reach him. I'm going to open this altar up. If you want to come to the altar and pray, it's open. If you want to kneel down where you're at and pray where you're at, it's open. Wherever you want to pray right now. But let's find a place to pray. That God, I want to know your purpose. I want it to be my purpose. I want your purpose to be my purpose. Oh, God, right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Hello, Moshanda, Lolo, Robo, Hotala, Maria, Tala, Maria. Oh, God. 